All right, we're pulling a mulligan today. Something just happened. The stream just suddenly died. And OBS was doing some weird stuff. It was like, drop, said drop frames, and all of a sudden it said nothing. And now the chat window is not seeming to work. Like, trying to chat, and nobody's chatting back. I don't know. I'm just going to try and keep on streaming here and see if this... I think it's Twitch. I'm going to blame it all on Twitch. It's all Twitch's fault. Don't got any more more drop frames, do we? Okay. Now, this create light beam. Oh, look, it jumped to the actual function that time. Real consistent Xcode. Okay, cool. Right on. Yay! Resurrected! Back from the dead! The stream is here! So if we were to take 0 0.707 and divide it by 0 0.5, we get a factor of 1.4. If we multiply that by 0.5, we get, oh, duh. 1.414 times 0 0.309. That's 0 0.436. So I'm upping the opacity a little bit here. So this is going to be a, whoops. What the heck? Oh god. Ah, ah. There. Alright, so I just upped the opacity a little bit for the light beam to make it kind of similar to the particles when I pass in a 1.0 for the opacity factor. Yeah, okay, that's better. So the light beam fades in and out, you can see, and the particles don't. But they fade out as they go down. So I like it when the light beam is at its full opacity, it seems to match the, the opacity of the particles quite well. I like that. Now I'm going to go and turn it back to how it was, where this sword has a light beam that is only a 0.5 opacity factor. And we'll see what it looks like. If it looks similar to what it was, or better. Hopefully it looks a little bit better than, than what it used to look like. Yeah, so that's what it, that's a lot like what it used to look like. The opacity being you know down quite a bit, half of what it should what it could be. That's cool. It gives it kind of a subtle effect here in this um this room. So what would happen if I did 0.5 on the scale if I wanted a thin light beam? In fact, I think I'm going to I'm going to switch it up and make it so the light beam scale can go x and y. Whiz from outer space. I'm here. I've come from I've come from a comet. I survived space. You know what? No, never mind. I'm just going to make this scale the X scale. So we're going to set scale pixel. Pixel times scale, or pixel times x scale, and then just pixel for y. So that allows it to kind of get a skinnier light beam if desired. And let's see if, let's see how the particles go. You know what? The particles are a bit too wide. Oh, 
Oh, cool, yeah. So that definitely got a, a lot skinnier of a light beam. But it affected the particles. I don't necessarily want the particles to be affected, so... And it's because it's because we're it's it's a child of the render component, which or it's basically a child of another sprite. And in Coco Studio X, when a node is a child of another node, and you set its scale, it also affects its children. So if I wanted to have an independent dust moat or independent dust moats. Oh, I guess I could I could try setting its scale. And the X to be 1.0 over X scale. That way it applies sort of an inverse. Yeah, cool. That worked. Next thing, I want the particles to not quite be so wide. Why are they so wide? This creation, okay, that's float width, and then width is hmm. I think we want this width to not be like that. We need to go width is a factor of the size of the beam. So size that width times, let's start with a half. Okay, so half is, is still too big. Let's do a quarter. Oh, you know what? I'm just I'm just realizing this light beam is actually colored. Ah, uh, that's better. So now it's only a tiny bit bigger than the light beam. Let's go even down to an eighth. And let's take the color off too. What's up, Azenris? How did you enjoy the first four videos, huh? So that was back in the day. I think it was only like seven months ago, but still, it feels like forever ago. Yeah, so let's take this light beam and let's make it, um, let's take off all the saturation. In fact, yeah, let's just add a, a desaturation layer. Because I don't want this to be colored. I want it to be able to change the color of this thing in the code. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> oh, man. If anybody's, if anybody's watching this and you're wondering what the heck we're talking about, this, every, vi every day, um, these videos are put on YouTube, and since day one, they've been put up on YouTube. So day one for this video game was about seven months ago, and the game has come a long way since then. So if anybody's interested in watching that, just click on the info for this page. It's all on YouTube. <clears throat> all right, so cool. Yeah, now it's white, and I can go and save this in Sheets, Backgrounds. we got an updated light zero. This is just one big light beam. And now I can color it in code. So color, oh, this is another thing I should probably put in here, color. And I should give it a default. So this will be, this will be the default color. There. Now it's got a default color. We'll pass that in right here, just like that. Oh, this should be a just C for color. 
because the color is a member variable. All right, um, now this, the light beam itself needs to have its color set. Render.sprite. Cool. All right, it's building now. Okay, so that should make it so we can change the color on the fly. So I could, if I want a green light beam, I can do that. Yeah, cool. Okay, good. That still looks exactly the same, which is what we wanted. And I'll, next I'll experiment with changing the color and stuff. But first, I want to make the actual height of the particles based on the height of the light beam. So right now it's like wind size dot height times 0.718, which is um, let's just make it size dot size dot height times let's try 0.75 at first. So now it's based on the size of the light beam rather than just based on some arbitrary wind size, which you know can be different depending on your platform. Yeah, cool. So at their greatest extreme, these light beam or these particles are coming down about yeah, three quarters of the way. Let's do a whole 1.0 there and see if that's too far. Yeah, actually, that's fine. Oh, might be based because it's based on the position. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So set position Y, let's do set size dot height times a half. I think that will put it all the way to the bottom because because of how it's it's anchored to its parent. Yeah, cool. All right, good. We're starting to get a nice, soft. But they go, they go all the way now, so that's cool. <laughs> a nice, soft thing that goes all the way. <laughs> okay, let's set the opacity way up so we can so we can play with that, and then I'll change the color to something totally random. Cool. So now we got. We're basically we're building a flexible method for creating light beams. And now that I'm create, now this this method has been created. I can go and apply that in lots of other places, like the like the levels and stuff. Wow, that's a crazy looking one with that big old green beam. Yeah, 1.0 is a bit too far now that now that it's set like that. But you burn the butterfly? That's a good idea. Right? I mean it's just if it's this green alien light. Here, let's, so that should be 0.75 now. Oh, even less. Wow. So cruel. So cruel. 
Magnifying glass, cruel. Wait, why isn't that affecting... Uh, I guess it's because of this. Yeah, that's a lot better. So now you see the brighter dust mode particles are starting in more at the top now. And they do go nice and almost to the bottom. They're almost faded out by the time they hit the bottom. So that looks really good. Um, okay, next thing I want to be able to position the light beam on a Y. So I've already got an X position. I want the Y position as well. So a light beam can kind of be placed in the top left, the bottom, you know, wherever the heck, wherever the heck the, bot the light beam should be. So we're going to go float x percent and float y percent. It's just a height. And I think this should be this should be Y percent. Plus a quarter. Because of the way it's anchored, it's anchored halfway. It is a mini tie fighter. According to the Button Masher Bros, all the butterflies are mini TIE Fighters, which is hilarious. Thank you, Button Masher Bros, for your hilarity. So now this light beam is going to be at a 0 0.5, so right in the middle it will stretch down to. Let's make sure that that comes back with the right position, and then also that we can change that position and move it around. Yep, cool. Still pointing right at the right at the sword position. So let's put it at 0.25. That should be a lower on the screen. Cool. Oh, it doesn't quite work though. It's not quite tall enough to be down that far. I guess I could scale it on the Y if, if, uh, if this position gets a little too low. But I'm not going to worry too much about it right now. So I'm going to set it really high. And then I'm going to set it really, really high. Move it around. Let's move around on the X too. So let's set it to like 0.25 here on the X. Cool. That works. Awesome. So good. Now we can position it. The light beam. Let's do one more check here. Let's put the light beam all the way in the top right. Cool. Okay, good. I like this method. I like it a lot. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this back to all how it should be here. This is 0.49. I'm more like 0.485 is what it should be. Um, default color with default 
So this should look like it used to. And then, yeah, and then we're ready to use this in the, in, uh, the dungeons. Yeah. Cool. It's a little brighter than it used to be. What, what was, oh yeah, so because it used to be a 0 0.5. Let's put it at 0 0.618. I think I, I'd like it a little brighter than it used to be. Yeah, cool. Golden. All right. Next step, let's go to the dungeons and put some light beams in everywhere. So I'm going to go back to this place in the dungeon last night where I was finishing up the switch, which turned out great, actually. I really love the switch. So let me... um. Let's just see what that looks like in this room. I wonder if it'll actually do it in this, if the random numbers are right for it to be there. Yeah, I use Command R. I just, I just run a, I run it. I, could, I do a, the, the run command does a build and then run. So yeah. So here's the new switch. This turned out. Awesome. I love it. So as you defeat enemies inside the room, it light starts lighting up. So now it's got two of its, or three of its lights, now it's got four. And there you go, it lights up, and now the boss door will be open. So there's no light beam in here, but let's, let's see what it would look like if there was. So I'm not even going to check R. And this should put three light beams. It's not going to put them in the right positions, but if I put this to point three nine, it will. And let's put them all perfectly vertical. Let's see what this looks like with three light beams. They're not spaced out far enough. Let's put them point two to point two nine. Yeah, it took a while to finish all that. It actually, it actually took me an entire day just to do that switch in that room and the sounds and the way it all mechanically works and stuff. Why aren't we seeing that third light? It's weird. There should be three. Oh, R mod three. Yeah, oh, that's what it is. It's just be N equals one plus R mod three. There, now we'll have three lights. Yeah, cool. All right. Good. We got three lights. I kind of want them to be able to be brighter. Now that I see now that I see them in the um in this in this context, in the dungeon context, I want them to be able to be brighter. Okay, so let's make the opacity do more. So if we pump the opacity all the way to the top, it's going to be 1 over 0 0.707. The factors, oh, once again, 1.414. I wonder if that has something to do with the square root of 2. Hmm. Okay, so anyways, this would be 1.0. Oh, 
Oh, no, that's a good idea. Yeah, maybe it should just be darker. I think that's probably what's going on with the, um, with the other room, with the sword and all that. It did have, like, a, um, it was darker, I think. You can con confirm that in the system where it does all its lighting. Where does it do that? Here it is, animate lights. Oh uh, no, it looks like it is using the exact same lighting. It's based on a darkness factor, which is just pumped up all the way to 1.0. Yeah, it's the exact same darkness. So I guess I could turn the play with all these ratios, lights, to make it darker. It's not really going to hurt anything. Just try it. Scale X, scale Y, color burn, soft light. I think levels, levels are gonna make it, color burn is really gonna make it a lot darker really fast. So what if color burn was 0.9? Whoa, that makes it crazy dark on the edges. But it's not doing much to the overall darkness. Wow. Let's turn the soft light way up. Whoa, that's weird. All right, so I didn't like that, um, but that could be cool. That could be a cool effect at some point. Levels are pretty strong. I know if I turn these up, this is gonna get crazy different. So I'm only gonna go halfway on that. I wonder what this opacity is though. Is that for all lights? Yeah, levels really give it that, they make the darks a lot darker and they make the lights a lot lighter. Wonderful. wonder if, if, let's try pumping that all the way up actually to 0.9. Thanks, Azenris. It's been a minute since I tried all this. I wrote these shaders, I, I was looking at it the other day and it was like day 30 or something like that, I wrote these shaders and it's been a, a lot of days since I actually went back to this. Oh, they must be capping the... Yeah, it must be capping that levels. Okay, so I like the levels about there. What if we put the opacity? I don't know what the heck this is, so let's try playing with it. Opacity for what? Oh, this might be the opacity for the main light. Wow, it's crazy seeing it with that dark. Oh yeah, it does have a random pattern already. But maybe you're, maybe you're saying more random, like randomize it even more.
How do I get the whole screen to just be a little darker? I think I would have to play with the shader. Oh yeah, this opacity is for the main light. Oh yeah, yeah, uh-huh, more holes in the floor. Yeah, um, for certain kind of rooms, yeah, there's definitely, there's already that where there's certain rooms where almost the whole floor falls away. But for this room in particular, I want there to be enough ground for you to fight enemies on and activate that switch. So this is a very, very special room for just meant just for that switch. So, uh, okay, yeah, I'm going to play with this lighting later. Oh, what if that's zero? <laughs> I got to play with it even more. Hmm. I don't know what that did. Okay, so this, I, if I run this, it should look exactly as it used to. And I'll play with all that later. I want to be able to turn the whole, the overall brightness down, and that's going to require some shader work. So I'm going to focus on that later. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Let's get back to these lights. So I do want the lights to be able to be a little brighter. So putting this to 1.0 and this one 0.436. That's gonna be 0.616. And then the opacity factor times 200, so this will be 250. Oh, maybe just leave it at 200. Particles were kind of bright already. No, I th I'm pretty sure they were 0.125, but let me check. Yep, yeah, they were 0.125, because otherwise I would see them here in the diff. Yeah, cool. Okay, so... That should make the lights a lot brighter, the light beams brighter. And then once once some overall darkness can, it can be applied, it'll really help that to look even better. Oh yeah, totally. So now it's like getting to be really bright when it gets to its, its upper limits. And one more thing, I think I do want the, uh, the opacity for these guys, the particles to be able to get really, really high. 250 instead of 200. That's a whole fifth more. Yeah, there. So they're, now they're at maximum brightness, these light beams. Which, in fact, they're even a little bit too bright. Let's see what, um, let's see what the, the sword looks like now. Sword room. I want the sword room to not be as bright, I think. Oh, that looks fine still. Oh, because it's a factor of the total anyway, so 0.6. It's really not that much different than, than what it used to be. Okay, cool. It still looks good. All right. Um... Put the player back here. Now, okay, now what I want to start doing is making these light beams kind of intelligent. So, so when they're placed, like they can pl be placed kind of in a row, like maybe the row of them goes start like upwards at an angle or downwards at an angle, or maybe they're placed in the top left or the bottom right or whatever. And there's maybe three of them, one of them, two of them. 
just so it gets a lot of like variety in how they can be placed in these dungeons. Thank you for following. Okay, so now I'm going to start with an X percentage and a Y percentage. X percentage, we'll make it based on this, get Rand 2F. And this is, it's, it's, can't, you can't put them all the way on the edge of the screen. So maybe start with 0 0.2F plus, let's get ran times um, 0 0.6F. So that'll center it. That'll keep the, that's an X factor which starts anywhere. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so this X percentage is going to be used here instead. And then the actual distance between the two. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, the distance between them. Hmm. Kind of like the distance between them being sort of constant or let's do an x distance between the two. So it's something like 0 0.2 f plus something. Do a whole point one there. So this is the distance between the two. Now the y, we'll do a y percentage. So y percent, I, we noticed, or it was noted that 0.25 was too far. So I'm thinking 0.35 is like the minimum, and then the maximum is like hmm. Let's just try 0.3. The distance between those. So that's. Is that right? 0 0.35 plus 0 0.35 plus 0 0.3. Yeah, that's one. Okay. Because so now we got a a y percentage and a, and a y delta between them as well. So the y delta. I I want the y delta to be like sort of random, but. Yeah, I guess I do want it to be random per, so never mind. We don't need a del actual delta. So this is going to be start here with Y percentage, add in a random. All right. This is zero rotation. That's right. Rotation, rotation, rotation. So something like negative 10 to positive 10, that's like the, the range of rotation.
And I wanted to, I actually, there's a chance that I want the rotation to change a little bit per light beam. So like one light beam could be like this. The next light beam is like that. The next light beam is like that. So, so it'd be RD, the distance between the difference between the rotations. And that one will do something like, I guess it would start with zero. So this, get rand 1F. I think in three degrees should be the max. So there's already, all right, cool. Now the rotation is anything from negative 10 plus this, get rand. Um, times, it would be 20, but it's minus, 20 minus RD times N. So we need N up here. All right, so here is the rotation plus RD times I. Okay, next thing, X scale. Man, all these are randomized. So hopefully this, this, hopefully this creates a real nice variety in the actual light beams. Um, so X scale, is like anything from 0.5 is going to be a real skinny beam, plus ran times 0 0.5, so that would be a, a nice thick beam. Is that X scale? Yeah, opacity factors, and that the last one, opacity. Anything from start at zero point seven oh seven. Let's just do zero point seven plus this. Get rand. Let's do point 0.2, so we can go up to like point 0.9 in its opacity. All right, let's see what the heck that looks like. I don't know. This is gonna be totally different for every room. Hope it looks cool. So I want to see more variation. In the Y factor. Let's set it at to point two. It didn't change, that's weird. Ah, it's not changing at all, because it's the same same factor every time. So there, add in I, that'll change its random number. There, beautiful, that's what I wanted to see. 
So now we're seeing not the same Y height for for these three light beams. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's w start wandering around this level and see what this, this is looking like with other light beams. Cool, this one has two light beams. They're totally different angles than the last room. Satisfied with that, I think. I'm liking this. These are totally like totally random. Oh, that's a bug. So as we transition from one to the other, these aren't transitioning right. Hmm. Wonder why. That's super cool though. Even the even this entrance room looks really even better. What's up? How you doing, JFK? Yeah, and that looks really weird going north as well. It's almost like the light beams should fade out. Oh, that's nice. Or maybe they should fade in. Are they fading in? Oh yeah, these are fading in, it looks like. Yeah, I'm working on light beams right now. So you see, this room kind of has a pretty distinct light beam pattern. If I go here in the dark, you can see even more like those light beams over there. So I'm working on placing these light beams all over the level right now in different areas and just trying to make them look cool. And I'm noticing right now as I'm walking from area to area, that's one of the biggest problems with them so far is that they're not, they're, they don't transition well, especially going south. But well, they look really pretty when you're just sitting there. That's cool. Whoa. <laughs> That's crazy how it... So this this thing is a light right here, this, la this Lampatron thing in the middle. And there's a light beam which ended up going perfectly right onto it. And it made it super bright. It's kind of cool. Let's take a look at the boss door as well. I'm almost dead. Oh, uh. oh, so lucky. Yeah, that's like the worst transition going north. I guess or south. Yeah, that looks great in here too. Hmm. What to do about these beams? I guess one thing that could be done is I could just make the tops of the beams softer because right now they got a hard edge. I guess that's 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 move number one. Let's call that move number one. So this is what it used to look like. Ah, oh, that's what I used for the original beam. Okay. So let's round these out on the top. This is, gives it a distance of 48. 
Let's grab 48 pixels there. Hello, Red Squadron. Yeah, it looks pretty good like that. Uh, oh, no worries. I don't I don't remember you being rude, man. It's cool. It's cool, man. What's up, Zek Flames? Howdy, howdy. I'm waking light beams today. Just messing with them. So right now they look pretty good in the game, but they, as you transition from area to area, they don't look that good. So there's three light beams in here, and then when I walk south, they look okay. But if I walk north, these two light beams look really weird. You see that edge? So I'm starting with trying out making them... Um, making the top of them soft. So there's like a softer light edge on the top. Now, I, what I gotta dial, dial in here is the, so this is the, the old one. This is what the light beam used to look like. And now I gotta get it so this new light beam has the same amount of Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna check out actually what this value is. This is a brightness of about 84 in the middle. So as long as I can get the width of this Gaussian blur to be about the same and then duplicate the layer enough so that the brightness in the middle is about 84. It should be about the same light beam. Oh, that's really close. Anymore, it's going to start getting clipped on the bottom. Mm, close. In fact, I'm going to move this up a couple pixels. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, what's the link? Maybe that might have been a tad bit too much. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, this looks really good now. There, that's pretty good. I'm gonna believe it like that because any any more and these actual you're not gonna really see these very much. Penguin programmer, huh? <clears throat> cool. Is this it here? Starting to code? Nice, man. All right. So I'm going to duplicate this. Let's see. What's that? Oh, this value. 65, we need more than that. Yeah, this is already starting to get clipped, I guess. So I'm gonna I'm gonna undo this. 
Nice, nice, nice. What's up, Boohoo Boss? Yeah, I can show you. Yep, I was just about to test this light beam, but yeah, I'll show you the game real quick. So, this is it. This is Songbringer. The main character here is called Rock. Um, this is the dungeons. There's actually dungeons and overworlds. It's a lot like Zelda 1. So if you think of Zelda 1, if you've ever played Zelda 1, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's um, But it's procedurally generated. So every time you you start an adventure, you enter a six-letter world code. Those six letters are used to generate your entire world. Um, and uh, that means you can create a world you know and love. Like you, you enter the same six letters each time. You can always create an a world that you're gonna know and you can go find the secrets for really fast or you can enter six letters you don't know and then you, you can enter a totally different world and play something completely new and fresh um, and yeah so there's these dungeons there's um, the overworld there's items there's item crafting um, there's bosses and everything so that's a quick introduction Okay, so I'm going to undo all this. I don't like how that edge turned out. I want it to be a little, a little more um, allowing this gradient to just nicely come to the edge rather than overwhelming it when it gets there. Yeah, there. Let's go one more. Oh, a little more than that. One. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. 22. Cool, and that's all move them all down a bit. Yeah, there, that one pixel made a difference. All right, cool. This is it. Try this out. What's up, baby? Hi. What's streaming? See this um <clears throat> nice good for you hoo hoo boss yeah I know what you mean I know what you mean when you do when you're developing something games take a long time man especially to do a, a full length game like this game has already taken seven months and it's gonna take at least seven more and after that I'm still going to be releasing it on more platforms, and that's going to take another six months. So we're looking at like a two-year project to do this game. But it's my passion. I love doing this. Yeah, what's your trouble you're having, Red Squadron? Let's try this out. Light zero, backgrounds. Let's see how this looks. Oh, yeah, that looks good here. Cool. Let's walk south. Good. Yeah, if only, okay, I got an idea. Now it's nice and smooth. We're not seeing any kind of like hard edge on the light, but it would be nice. So there's this factor called uh, flux alpha, which I can apply to these lights. As I move, as I transition, fluxes are, well, transitions are called fluxes in my game. So I can apply that flux alpha to the brightness or the opacity of the light beams 
and then that will make it really nice and smooth as they go from area to area. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're just learning, man. You'll get it. You'll get it. Yeah, just like Arcane saying, after you write more code, do do keep on doing those tutorials, you know? And eventually it's not really like you're memorizing code, it's more like you're learning and you're you're getting the muscle memory of it all. You know, you're getting the it becomes automatic at some point. You just know the language and it's just it gets a lot easier. Yeah, Arcane, they are. They are. Um, and that is that is physically wrong. It's 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 mentally wrong to do that, but I had to do something to make the transitions uh, smooth. So to go from one light to one one lit area to another, and because if I kept the lights at full, like full on, going from room to room, it looked really bad because the transitions were just horrible. And then so this yeah, this is totally physically wrong for for like. And you, you notice the shadows do that too. So watch the sh watch the shadows. The shadows of the player's feet. Watch them as I go from this room to that room. They actually they fade in and fade out. So um, so yeah, there's a lot of things that are not quite right. You know, it wouldn't light wouldn't physically do this, but I'm doing it anyways. You know, who cares? It's a video game. You gotta you gotta make some video gamey choices at sometimes. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You'll get it though. You'll learn. You really just got to keep on doing those those little basic tutorials cuz you're at this point you got to your your challenge is getting used to the STL, you know what I mean? What, you know, you once you get used to the STL, you'll know automatically where to put everything and it just it won't be that difficult either. So, keep on keep on learning every keep on progressing each day, you know, learn a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And it'll get easier and easier. So how would I apply that flux alpha to these light beams? Need to put some kind of um, something dis to distinctify to make these light beams distinct as entities, and then I could go and look for all those entities. <clears throat> I mean, I guess I could get it a name component. Yeah, let's, do, let's try a new name component. This will this will be one way to do it. For this might not be the most perfect way to do this, but I'll give each one of these the same exact name called light beam. <clears throat> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> wow, you never use string or any of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been coding for twenty years, so quite a way while. And yeah, I know a lot of other languages besides C plus plus. Um, Objective C, Python, JavaScript. Okay, so yeah, now each one of these has a light beam, and as we transition, kind of made lights. This, this kind of would work, I guess. We'll put it here. Flux alpha. This is kind of it right here. I'll do that right here. It's just a, this might be a kind of a hack at first, but um, f 
for auto EID in entity get all name component um, if entity get oh yeah name component for EID dot name it's not equal to light beam then we continue this loop otherwise we get the render component EID dot sprite set opacity oh 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 They've already got an action running, so that's going to be kind of tricky. I got to think about this. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Yeah, you know, everybody's got their own language that they really resonate with. You know, it's like their thing. And a lot of people, it's Java or it's like C sharp. You maybe, you know, so like, yeah. I totally recommend that. You know, don't stick with the language you like. Stick with the language that's that's like that resonates with you that you that that you can work fastest in. You know, because that way you're just you're saving yourself a lot of time. Because you can express everything in any language. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's Java or C sharp or C plus plus. Really, in the end, it matters what you do with it, what game you make, or what software you're making, or whatever. So. <clears throat> So I'm going to stop all actions if, shoot, we don't want it to, oh, I know what we could do. Instead of doing it this way, this is a kind of a, a janky way to do it actually. Now I got a better idea. And when it actually, when the area moves, the light beams, and I guess I can, I can leave this name component, so that's good. But when it calls uh, move entities, then we can we can fade out. So this is going to be um, fade out the light beams. So um, get the name component. If entity get name component for ID equals light beam, then we've got the int. So this is int dot render dot sprite dot stop all actions. So it stops the existing action that was running to fade it in and out. And now we'll run one more action run action, fade out, create over like 1.0 or whatever this transition is. One second ought to do. Let's see if this works. So if this works, then we can go north and south and it should look a lot better. Yeah, yeah, Red Squadron, you can always check out these videos on YouTube. They're all there on the YouTube channel. All you got to do is click on the info for this Twitch page, and it's got the link to my YouTube or whatever. And if you if you miss any of that info, if you an easy way to find all that info, everything about Songbringer, just go to songbringer.com. It's got the link right here to the Facebook, the Twitter, the Twitch page, the YouTube channel, everything. And every single day of development is archived on YouTube. Tavin, what's up? I stand up because it's better for my back. It's better for my body in a lot of ways. I keep I have a lot more energy too. What's up, Colleen? Yeah, I, I don't have a standing up desk. This is just the um right here in a closet, you guys. This is a total makeshift standing desk. I put my laptop here on this, this top shelf of the closet, and then I just put my keyboard and stuff on these some boxes. 
So you don't have to go out and buy yourself a stand-up desk. You can build one out of whatever. Graph theory. Wow. That's yeah, that's that's pretty complex to write in any language. Good job, Arcane. Let's see if this works. Okay, so we got light beams. Ooh, did they fade nicely? Yeah, nice. Oh, it looks perfect. Cool. So the light beams from this area, watch the light beams here. If I go north, they fade out very nicely. Cool. Okay, let's watch them as we go like left and right. I didn't want to go in this room. <clears throat> Wow. Wow, and it's multi-threaded? Dang. That's some serious code right there. Yeah, cool. Something's up with the, oh, I know what it is. It's doing three light beams right here in this room. And that third light beam is actually off the screen. Oh, okay, so I need to check that when I create the light beams. Yes, yeah, I do a daily tour of many things. Uh, yeah, Tabin, I think I do remember you. I remember your name popping up a while ago. Yeah, thanks, Kiwi. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting, all right, these light beams are really out a lot, don't they? What's up, Vlad? Yeah, Tabin, all these questions are right there on the frack, man. So you click the Twitch info for this page, and there's the answer for all that, but I'll answer for you anyways. The game's on Steam, quarter one, 2016, so about seven months from now. The game's coming out on Steam. That's going to be Windows, Mac, Linux. It's going to be about 20 bucks, 16 bucks, something like that. Um, and um, then it's going to be coming out for iOS as well, for sure. And you can pre-order the game right now, and that gets you honorary backer status. So your name is actually thanked on the main menu as an honorary backer. So everybody's names actually appear there on the main menu. And... Um, and not only do you get that, but your pre-order counts towards getting the game on Android, um, PlayStation 4, and Xbox, and possibly Retro VGS, because yes, the Retro VGS guys actually wrote me back, so maybe that will be a thing. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Hoo-hoo, boss. All I changed was uh, the lights fade out when I when I go from one area to another now that there's a very nice smooth transition <laughs> right I know yeah it's my own issue I gotta I gotta like stop being so exasperated sometimes cool thanks Tabin okay so um yeah when it's creating all these lights there's one little thing left to do here, and I'm about finished with the stream, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make this last little change. We'll take a look and see how it looks, and then um, that's gonna be it for today. It's Sunday. I'm gonna kick back with my girl, make some dinner and stuff. Okay, so here's it. Here's where it's creating all these light beams, um, and if okay, so if the X percentage. So we actually need to do this. We need to do the delta first. And then the x percentage. Yeah, this needs to be. Oh, you know what? I kind of liked it the way it was. Yeah. Okay. I'll just do an if right here. If um, the x percentage, whoops, plus I 
times xd is less than 1.0. Cool. That should fix it so that third light beam won't even be sh won't even be visible. Yeah, arcane right? Isn't it weird? It's like it, it doesn't physically make any sense, but the transition making those lights grow and the shadows grow is an, is somehow nice, right? It's it's also very video gamey. It's like it's not it doesn't actually make any sense, but it kind of looks cool. So, hoo hoo boss, you're wondering what changed. Um, before, what the, the problem was is as I transitioned from one area to another, the light beams, you can see on this screen there's two light beams. There's one here and there's one here. There, the player is right under, underneath one of these light beams here. There's another light beam right here. And watch as I walk, no if I walk north, before, the problem was the light beams were still visible, fully visible, so that you would see them right here on the on the bottom, so that where the player is now, you would still see that light beam from the from the previous screen as you transition. But since I added that this little fade out, so watch them, they fade out nicely. See that? Those light beams are fading out as I go from one area to another. And so it just makes the transition really, really nice and smooth. And this one? Yeah, cool, it works. So now that third light beam from this area is not even visible on this screen, so that's very, very cool too. So there was nothing wrong with the transition. That, that, oh man, this makes this room look really cool too, with those light beams there. And I guess another thing I should randomize is the actual width. Yeah, let's play with the width a bit. Thanks, Red Squadron. Yeah, that, that's, that could explain it, right? They're motion sensor torches. JFK, yes, there's going to be a local multiplayer. So if you have a buddy or a friend or whatever with you, um, a player can be a player two, and player two is going to be a support character. So this player two character cannot actually hurt enemies, cannot be hurt by enemies. So they're invincible and they can't hurt enemies, but they have abilities like they can stun um, and they can do... I'm not sure exactly what abilities she'll have and stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Red Squadron. All right, so, um, yeah, I'm going to play with the width of just a tiny bit, too. Oh, I already did. X scale. Never mind. All right, I already did that. And let's do one last thing. Let's make it so it's based on a random percentage. So some rooms will not have light. Actually, I kind of like the light. I'm not. I'm just. I'm not even gonna. Not even gonna do this. I'm gonna leave it like that. So every room has light. Super Mario Galaxy copycat. How so? <laughs> yep. I'm copying every game there ever was. It's pretty much impossible to make games that are totally unique. I realized that a long time ago and I stopped worrying about whether I'm copying someone else or not. <clears throat> if, you, if you're going to say this game's copying anyone, you should say it's copying Zelda 1 because that's really what it's copying the most. All right, I'm happy with this. That's it for today's stream. I'm going to play around a little bit and see how these lights look or elsewhere in this dungeon. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to go downstairs and make sure that this um these lights don't happen on the overworld. Yeah, we have that big light beam. That's okay though. <clears throat> Yeah, Sesame Street Adventures. Everything is a remix? Yeah. Oh, I like this already. I'm going to check this out later. I like the sounds of that.
Yeah, oh, Arcane, in C++, you can put brackets wherever you want, and that creates a block. So a block is a special thing where all these variables are now part of this block. See this? You can create blocks anywhere. You don't even need to have the if or whatever. So that's kind of a misconception. I could do this. Like, check this out. I could just create a block right here. I could go int x equals 7 inside this block. And, okay, great. There's this, this variable called x inside this block. And as soon as you get outside of that block, this x variable is no longer available. It's it's gone beyond its scope. Is what it's basically what this creates is scopes. These blocks create block scope because C++ is a block scoped um, language. Yes, yeah, Red Squadron. The dungeon is sort of a spaceship. It's a like, there's like dungeons that are floating. They're part of a floating city type thing. There's going to be dungeons that are part of a spaceship. But yeah, it's sort of a um, sci-fi meets fantasy art. Yep, yep, yep. What? I I'm not sure. I'm not quite following you there, Red Squadron. What you asking? All right, cool. I'm really, really happy with these lights. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's stream. Um, appreciate everybody coming in and chatting and saying hi and stuff. And I hope this, these videos help you guys. I hope you guys get inspired or you learn something. And um, Yeah, so I'll be back. Uh, once again, I'm, my normal stream time is like 2 p.m. Whoa, my brightness was down there. Um, yeah, my normal stream time is 2 p.m. or 4 p.m. sometimes, uh, Pacific time. So, yeah, I'll be back later on.